So when you are factoring something like this, and what do I mean something like this? I mean a quadratic trinomial where your A, your leading coefficient is not equal to one. <clears throat> Too many people are still trying to do it the way you would do it if it were a one. You can't just jump in and put XX and then stick the numbers in and call it a day. It's not gonna work. So first and foremost, you always gotta check for a GCF. Pull out those GCFs, put them out front. We don't have one here, but then we're gonna take the A and the C and we're gonna multiply them. This is a sure way to get your answer. Um, six times negative 10 is negative 60. One and 60, two and 30. I'm writing down everything that multiplies to give me 60, and then we'll figure out the negative. Four, two doubled is four, so 30 and a half is 15. Five, well, 10 goes in there six times, so five goes in 12 times. Six and 10, seven, no. Eight is double four, can I have 15? No. Nine, three times three, 20 divided by three, no. 10, already on the list. B for bottom of the list. B is 11. Now, what are we doing? Okay, I need to find a pair of numbers on this list that multiplies to give me negative 60. That's this. We only have to choose from six choices, but it needs to be able to add to give me 11. So I'm thinking this looks pretty good and it has to give me a positive 11, but multiply to give me negative 60. So I'm looking at a positive 15 and a negative four. Now I'm gonna set up the double bubble, but here is where we screw up. You want the outer product and the inner product. So this times this is the inner, this times this is our outer to create, when all is said and done, negative 4x and positive 15x. That's their products, okay? That's what this times this multiply to give and this and this multiply to give. Now, this is the trickiest example because six could be six and one or one and six, two and three or three and two. We have a lot of options. So if we think about it though, it's not gonna be six and one because I can't fit six into 15 or four. Six just doesn't go into them. Like it, nothing multiplies six times a cute number gives me four. No, six times a cute number gives me 15. No, so I'm looking at two and three. So I'm gonna go like this, two X, three X. Does that give us six X squared? Yes, check, that part's taken care of. Next, I need to pick from the numbers I know to make 10. 10 and one or two and five, and then order matters. But 10, 10 doesn't go into any of these either, so we're looking more two and five. So 2x times something at the end will equal either 4x or 15x. Well, I'm assuming this is gonna be the 4x because I have a two, and this is gonna be the 15x because I got a three, you know? So if that's 4x and I need a negative, negative 4x, then I need negative two. So I have a negative 4x, yay. And then two times what is 10? Well, that'll be five and I need negative 10, so plus five plus five, 15x. So if you foiled it back out to check, right? First times first, we said six x squared, check. Outer was negative four x. Inner is a positive 15 x. And what do they combine to give us? 11 x. And then last times last is negative 10. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. So again, you can't just take that four and 15 and stick them here with x and x. It, just foil it in your head. It doesn't give you back the original problem. The real deal is that you want your outer product and your inner product to give you the numbers from that chart if you're gonna do the cheap trick, okay? So that is the mini explanation, nothing fancy, of the cheap trick for factoring quadratic trinomials when the A value is not equal to one. And don't forget, you always take out a greatest common factor first. And if there's a negative, please, 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 please factor out that negative one from everything. I don't know why everyone tries to be a hero. It's very silly, okay? So hope you understood that. All right, adios.